Glory to God. I want to welcome everyone to another one of our Friday night Bible studies. Friday night live. This is truly Friday night live. We've been studying something that uh, we chose to title Manifested Success. And we made a commitment that each one of the lessons we would make, I would make this statement. And that is success is only obtained in and through our salvation in Christ Jesus. I'm very adamant about this, that there is absolutely no success. How much did I say? None. No success outside of salvation in Christ Jesus. And the greatest example we have of this is the scripture with Jesus himself speaking. And he asked this question, what would it profit a man if he was to gain the whole world and lose his soul? That's my question. What would it profit a man? And for how long? And how much of the profit could he take with him? So to trade, Jesus said, you're going to trade your eternal soul. You're going to trade all of eternity for a few years here with a few possessions. It doesn't make sense. If there's anyone that's rationally thinking, why would I trade what little bit of money or fame or wealth and material goods that I could obtain here for all of eternity. Just, just think on that. What would it profit a man? Absolutely nothing. I mean, if you live for 150, 200, 300 years, divide. But to find out what percentage of eternity that would be, wouldn't you divide 300 by eternity? What kind of number, what, what kind of computer would you need to come up with such an infinitesimal number that you traded for a few years here? And then in our study, we see that uh, we came up and we were discussing uh, one of our last sessions, the fact that our plan for life, we've been saying this for quite a, quite a while, if you want to have a truly good plan for life, that plan should be to fulfill God's plan for your life. It's really simple. If you want a successful plan for your life, to make your plan, I'd write it down. My plan is to fulfill God's plan for my life. It's real easy. We make some of these things harder than they have to be. Oh, I need to know my purpose in life. Okay, that's God. How can I have a plan for life if I don't know my purpose in life? So, well, where would you find your purpose? It would have to be in the Word of God. So in going through this lesson and, and, and thinking about those things, the Holy Spirit had us go to Romans chapter 12, Verses 1 and 2. And those are really familiar scriptures. Let's, let's go back there again. They're very familiar scriptures. We're not going to anything that's obscure. We're just going to look at what God has plainly put before us. In Romans chapter 12, verse 1, it says, I beseech you therefore, brethren, by the mercies of God, that ye present your bodies as a living sacrifice, holy, acceptable unto God, which is your reasonable service. In verse 2, and, when it starts with and, isn't that a conjunction? It, it, it's hooked up to the sentence before. It says, and be not conformed to this world, but be ye transformed by the renewing of your mind, that you may prove what is God, what is that good and acceptable and perfect will of God. 
that you can do what? You can prove this. This isn't something, so, oh, I don't know. I don't know if it's any way, you know, God's ways are, or what, are they, what was that church he saying? Used to have are, are, are mysterious and, and uh, so I'm glad I don't even remember it. <laughs> yeah, it's, I, I don't even remember it now. I'm glad that I don't. <laughs> but what we did is we took some time to look at this because we came to another premise that we are successful if we have salvation in Christ Jesus. Just the opposite of not being successful is not having salvation. If we do have salvation, we are successful. And we would be deceived if we were trying to strive to be successful. We are successful. I said, so, well, Pastor, what is this lesson about? What, why, why have we been studying this for several months now? Because he called on us to work out our own salvation. See, our success is contained in our salvation. Now, he says, work out all the benefits of your salvation. Well, I need to know. But you guys help me. What are some of the benefits of our salvation? What's that? Good health. So if, if, if I have salvation, and salvation brought me good health, how should my health be? Should be good, shouldn't it? What else do I have in salvation? Riches. So if getting salvation brought me riches, then I should have in my life riches. I mean, this isn't asking too much, is it? It's not asking for something that he didn't die, go to hell, and be raised for us to have. He wanted us to have the health and have the riches. What else? Restored relationships. In other words, my family and, and the people that I love and care for and have a relationship with, that should be intact. So I have health, I have wealth, I have restored relationships. What else? Protection. I should be protected, and we should if we've got ministering spirits. We have angels that are to minister to the heirs of what? Salvation. So if we have salvation, we have ministering spirits that are working for us. What else? Everlasting life. Everlasting life. Well, that, see, that's over in the eternal, in the eternal realm. That's what says we have success. We have that eternal life. What else do we have here that we should be manifesting? See, we have wealth. We have restored relationships. We have health. We have eternal life. What about peace? That's a great thing to have. Just peace. Soul peace. Heart peace. We should have these things. What about preservation? That's long life. He said, with long life will I satisfy you. So we shouldn't be dying prematurely. We shouldn't be dying young. Now, if we don't see these things happening in the life of believers... I would have to think it's because we haven't done yet to the extent that we're going to or we're in the process of worked out our own salvation. See, he put this in our hands. He said, I've got the eternal life. I've given you Jesus. I've given you my Holy Spirit. He'll never leave you nor forsake you. I've given you these things. Now you take these tools that I've given you and work out your salvation. Work out your health. Work out... Well, how do I work out my health? That's really one. I usually go to wealth, but let, let, let's stick with health this evening. How do I work out my health? That's why we have the classes. That's why we have the lesson. That's why we have the study. It can't be that I work it out by being good. That's not the answer. How do you think? Anyone have any idea how we, how we work out our, our health? Do what? Eat right and live right. That's right. That'll help. Believe in God. Well, we believe in God. We, we got that settled, right? We believe to the extent of not only believing in God the Father, we believe in God the Son. We got our salvation through that, so we have our health. Now we're just discussing how do we work it out. 
Well, let me point out this aspect of it, because we can go on with this for the rest of the hour and never get into the meat of how to do any of this. See, what we just read in Romans 12, 1 and 2 is part of how we work this out. Now, this should be part of our plan to fulfill God's plan for our lives. Let me read verse 2 in the Amplified Bible. It says, do not, this is Romans 12, 2, do not be conformed to this world, this age, or fashioned after, adapted to its external superficial customs, but be transformed, changed by the entire renewal of your mind, by its new ideals and its new attitude, so that you may prove for yourself what is the good and acceptable and perfect will of God even the thing which is good and acceptable and perfect in his sight for you. So we can prove for ourselves what God's will is. and his, We can prove for ourselves that his will is for us to be healed, for us to live all of those things and more that we just got through talking about. It doesn't say we have to wait till God proves this to us, does it? It, says you can, it? it even says that in the King James. By renewing your mind, you may prove what is the good and acceptable and perfect will of God. For us, not proving it for God, proving it for us. But in our proving it for us, the way God set up things, everything is a blessing designed to bless. Everything he blesses us with is so that we will be a blessing. This doesn't stop. This isn't supposed to be welled up. The word when you get it is not to be welled up, it's to be lived and shared. And we want others, see, the word tells us not to seek our own wealth, but every man another's wealth. Say, so, well, why would I go to trying to get somebody else rich? Because I'm already rich. I've got mine. When did I get mine? I got mine when I got my salvation. Now, what he wants us to do is work out our salvation, work out our health, our wealth, before other people, so they'll come to you and say, uh, why do you have such peace? Don't you know, didn't you hear the news? Don't you know they're about to, and this is happening? And why are you at peace? And at that point, he said, well, let me tell you about my Jesus. How did you get that car? How did you get the money? What, where, Walter, where did that stuff come from? Let me tell you about my Jesus. See, this, this thing is so, God has this wrapped up so tightly, so snugly. It works and it all fits together so perfectly. Let me give you an example. This is what we're talking about. Physical health now. Scientists... I'm not talking about people in the church. I'm talking about scientists. Right now, currently, have come to the conclusion that the human body, the human makeup, the makeup of the human body is wired for love. The proper wiring of our brain of our electrical system, you know, we generate enough electricity, we have an electromagnetic field that we throw off. All of this is being generated inside of us. They say there's enough electricity generated by our brain to light a light bulb. This is the way we were, God tells us you're wonderfully and fearfully made. And I've always liked that because I know there are things that we don't know about ourselves even yet that God built into the plan and into the system. Well, and what the scientists have done, they found out that we were wired for love. This is real important, and, and you just think back a little bit. God created man. He created the wiring system in man. And he created mankind to be like him. You getting a picture of this? He wouldn't have built in from we, what we know of our God, he wouldn't have built in any short circuits. If he did the wiring, he wired us perfectly. 
you know, you build a building, we build a building here, right? You put in the wiring and, and you go over and, you know, you get to your house, you go over, you turn on the switches, you expect the lights to come on, you turn on the thermostat, turn it up, you expect the heater to come on. And if it's not wired properly, the lights won't come on. Things won't work properly. If there's a bad connection someplace, the wiring in the house can cause a fire and do great damage. Well, this is, we're talking about your health, our health. This is what God did. We're wired for love. We're wired for positivity, not negativity. And when our brains are working properly, scientists found that the mapping of the brain, when they track the electricity going through the brain, that everything there makes the synapses they call are just healthy and fluid and vibrant and just But when we have negative thoughts or worry or negative thought patterns, we start having shorts occur in the brain. They got pictures of them. The, the electricity was designed to go this way and that way and it's smoothly and all of a sudden it runs into something where there's no connect here. You weren't designed to go down that road. You weren't designed to think like that. So the thought forms, they, they got pictures of this you guys, the thoughts start to form. See thoughts form the electric circuits of how our brain is going to handle some information we receive. When we start thinking on it, our brain, brain starts to make pathways for it. It takes something from the mental realm and brings it into the physical realm, then in our brain it starts to build proteins. I mean, they measure all this stuff. And what happens when it's not functioning properly, the proteins that are formed go to a place that there's no passage, there's no linkage, there's no hookup, and it starts to form scar tissue in the brain, the physical brain. Not scar tissue in the mind, scar tissue that can be measured in the physical brain. But look what else happens when these negative thoughts are being dwelt upon. It starts to shut down the immune system. And now, guess what? We're talking about our health and how God built it into the system. So now that because our thinking isn't right, our health is now being attacked, and we are susceptible to diseases and attacks by germs and outside. We weren't, God didn't design us to get colds. Just think back, when God was forming and creating man, he formed him to live forever. We weren't to die from cancer and different things attacking and destroying our bodies. But here's the good news. The scientists have found that if you take and change your thinking, that you'll build up like a guard against the negative patterns that are formed in your mind, the, the synapses won't run over there, they'll shrivel in these things, it's like a scab on a wound drying up and, and there's, no, there's no energy being fed to this thing, it can't do the harm and the damage that it was doing. And then we come to a, a scripture in the Bible, and as long as we don't make it religious, but we make it practical, that God is telling us to do something. He said, be ye renewed. How? Now he tells me how to renew my body. Be ye renewed. How? Through the renewing of your mind. 